there's another agent. Uh, he was killed off duty and they spread his ashes down the river. I was sitting in my truck. It was probably two o'clock in the morning and all of a sudden there's a dude sitting next to me in my truck and he was wearing a white shirt and blue jeans. I spun around and scared the crap out of me because there's nobody in my truck. I caught a glimpse of him just long enough to know who it was. And I had met him and he was killed when I was pretty new in the patrol, but I knew who it was. All right, so this is uh, Mount Cristo Rey. We're kind of on the western edge of the, of the mountain. Right now there's agents up there looking for some people. Uh, he's up on the tracks up there. At any given time, there's gonna be smugglers that are watching us from different points up there. Uh, they're they're going to be you know probably up in this area on the on, sort of on the south side. Okay. If they're tucked into the rocks and stuff, we'll never be able to see them from where we're at. So even if you have an agent walking the rail line, yeah, they'll just stay put, hunker down. Or... Yeah, they'll stay there. It's their job. You think they're watching us now? They could be. I mean, I'm pretty sure the agents are watching us, trying to figure out what we're doing too. <laughs> you know, so and the fact that they got probably an outstanding group that's running around up there. You know, they're keeping an eye on us, thinking we're maybe smugglers or something. Yeah. Somebody passed behind us here, probably another agent looking for another group. You know, it wouldn't surprise me if they popped out right here and ran past us. Hmm. You know, so this, this area is very, very active uh, for uh, illegal aliens and smuggling and stuff, okay. very active. I mean, you wouldn't think it being close to a really nice restaurant. So when I was sitting here, I could hear the dogs barking over here. That's usually an indicator that somebody's they shouldn't be there. And uh, you can see dust just below this little parking lot right here. You can see dust. So somebody was driving through there. So probably an agent you know, <laughs> looking for some bodies. Wow. So it's active 24 seven, it never ends. You know, the people around yeah. here, they got to put up with the helicopters constantly going through. You want to look at the wall? Yeah. You can take oh. us down there. Let's do it. Yeah, I would. Okay. I've never been, so. Let's do it. For the past few decades, the U.S.-Mexico border has been a breeding ground for violence. With human smuggling, drug trafficking, and other crimes occurring right across this very border, agents of the U.S. Border Patrol are constantly put up against various risks, such as being subject to a physical assault and even being murdered. Leon Baker is an ex-Border Patrol agent who experienced a number of extremely strange paranormal encounters while working with the U.S. Border Patrol outside of El Paso, Texas. So join us tonight as we explore the ghosts of the border. Range, just in case they decide to start chucking rocks. So, what do you mean? Uh, the, some of the people that live over here, they don't like us too much. So they could start throwing rocks and stuff. Uh, so we just want to kind of stay out of their, their range. So this area right here, this is, uh, this is called Anapra. So it's in... Oh yeah, oh, you yeah. gotta introduce yourself. <laughs> where we're at, where we're at. My name is Leon Baker. I'm a retired Border Patrol agent, uh, recently retired. Uh, right now we're in uh, sort of like the area called Sunland Park, uh, New Mexico, but it's called Anapra. This little area is called Anapra. And behind me is the wall, that's the border. Yeah, they, so so it's really, really active out here. There's constant uh, traffic and stuff like that happening. Um, but we got agents all over the place working this area. But uh, a few years back, uh, probably about 20 years ago, um, the trains would stop right here. And uh, they, the people that lived in these colonias back here would rob the trains. So they had a, a big old operation with uh, the FBI and the Border Patrol. And in, uh, so they were set up on it and as soon as the people started breaking into the trains uh, the agents swooped down on them to arrest them and then they just got rocked you know people started throwing rocks at them and stuff like that and some of the fbi agents they really didn't know where they were at and they ran for shelter on the south side in mexico and they got beat up pretty bad so it was a big incident you know so we don't have those type of incidents now but that we have the wall here you know and this one's this wall has been there for a long time but over there is mount cristo rey um, spooky place in its own it's it's just uh there's so much going on in there uh there's probably going to be some some smugglers somewhere in there uh if you look you can see a little monument like a little cement white monument mm -hmm. halfway down the mountain right there that's the border so that's the actual border yeah that's it's it's active it's uh active uh with a tons of illegal activity tons of illegal activity going on out here has anyone ever been like killed in this area yeah yeah like I, I wouldn't be able to tell you who 
or when, but... Uh, How does that usually happen? So, I mean, we've been working in this area since ni 1924. Yeah. You know, so a long, long time. Uh, we've had uh, the illegal aliens come across in the summertime, and it's really, really hot out here and dry and stuff, and some of them don't even make it up to the to the to what we call the colonia, where people live. You know, they just pretty much just uh, go into distress and then pass away, and we find them a few days later. Wow. So, uh, yeah, a lot, a lot of stuff happening out here. A lot of stuff. And a lot of garbage. What's, oh, tons what's the of reason garbage. for the garbage? Uh, the, there's an actual landfill just on the other side of that mesa over there. So there's a landfill that, um, you know, people take their, their garbage to and then they pant, you know, they smash it down and stuff. But sometimes the wind kicks it up and takes all this debris and blows it over here. Hmm. So it, this it, is literally coming largely from a landfill. A lot of it's from huh. the landfill, yeah. That's, that's a lot of trash. Uh, I believe this is also a Napra on the other side. Uh, I think they, because they both kind of have the same names, but I'm not real sure about the name of this one. This isn't my station, so I'm not real sure about the name of it. Uh, again, it's just it's just basically a little colonia, a little a little pueblo, a little town that's that's on the south, just uh, where you know people have over the years one house, two houses, three houses, and there's probably about 50 houses over there, something like that now. And then Juarez uh, is that direction. Well, yeah, Juarez is going to be just on the other side of the mountains, right over there. So this is kind of part of Juarez, like the outskirts of Juarez, right here. So it's not too far off. Juarez is a really big city. You know, yeah. It's probably about the, twice the size of El Paso. And El Paso is not small anymore either. You know, so, but it's a really big town. What do they use mainly to do? They got these little ladders. They got several different types of ladders that they make. Uh, they have this really cool little ladder that fits right between the metal. So you climb up using this little skinny ladder and you climb down using the same one. And oh. they make it out of like that real thin rebar and stuff. It's real lightweight. They just hook it over the top and right over. Uh, a lot of times they use ropes, rope ladders. You know, it's like MacGyver out here. You know, they, yeah. the smugglers are, are real good at it. But yeah, usually got uh, like the Mexican armies hanging out somewhere over here sometimes on the south side and, and uh, you know our guys are what do they do like to like drills or what would they be hanging out there for uh, just to help out with the with the illegal aliens okay so just kind of happy. tell them don't cross right here yeah. just don't cross right here do you find that your the cooperation with the Mexican army or the Mexican government is good yeah, it's not bad. It's the, the hard part we have is communication. Like, we really can't communicate with them, like radios and stuff like that. We can talk to them. And, you know, we can we can get near them and yell at them, hey, you got a group over here, you know, and then they'll go respond to it. Uh, they help out a lot. Um, you know, if we got some sort of vehicle that's doing something weird on the south side, uh, we'll call our liaison unit. The liaison unit will get a hold of, of the Mexican military or the Mexican police department, and then they'll pull over the vehicle. So it's pretty timely. I mean, it works out pretty good, you know. After checking out the wall, Leon took us to Mount Cristo Rey, which is a notorious place in the El Paso area known for its varied reports of paranormal activity. And driving out there to that isolated mountain, I don't know, things started to feel a little eerie. You can see in this footage how the terrain changes, how it was rugged. There were a ton of Border Patrol agents everywhere. And this area is filled with mystery. Look at this little tunnel. We were excited to do this interview. So down, you can see the shoelaces, a couple of hats and stuff down in here. It's kind of like a, a meeting place where we put the people into the into trucks and stuff like that and transport them out. And usually the people, we catch them up in the mountains up in here and stuff like that and bring them out. So these are like hats and articles of clothing from people that are yeah. trying to cross? Yeah. Yeah, wow. they got caught. <clears throat> but uh, this is Cristo Rey. I mean, you can see there's an agent up on top of the hill right there. Um, some interesting things have happened right in this area too. Is there a road going up there? Yeah. Yeah. It kind of looks like it's like it's, it's like right up there. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> yeah, they just will. Hey, you're up, Agent Leon. You're here today. I want to yeah. ask you too. What was that oh, yeah. tunnel thing? Was that a sealed off tunnel? Uh, yeah. There's a there's a lot of tunnels underneath this mountain uh, in different areas. Um, there's there's mine shafts and everything. Uh, you you name it. This this place has got lots of little tunnels and stuff. I'm not real sure where they end up. Uh, or where they come from, but uh, this place is crisscrossed with, with tunnels. Yeah. Kind of eerie looking. <laughs> That's why I brought you here. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Alright, so over here in this wash, you can see the footprints down inside there. Uh, they, they, from here they appear to be pretty fresh. Um, that would probably be at least one group that came through here. 
Uh, if it's just one group, it's pretty sizable, probably about 20 or 30 people. Uh, you can see uh, they just come through here. You can, you can tell kind of that it happened at night because they, they end up underneath that instead of just cutting straight across. Hmm. You know, so it was probably at night, probably last night. Uh, some of the ones that go all the way straight through, those have probably happened uh, sometime today. Do you think those people got caught? Hard to say. It's hard to say out here. Wow. So it just depends on how many people we're, we're able to uh, put in the field. You know, sometimes we can. But most of the time, they're going to catch them. Hmm. Most of the time. So right over here, this little hump right there, somewhere inside that little hump, uh, there's some dinosaur tracks, you know, from what, 15, 20 million years ago, something like that. Uh, but this whole area has got fossils and dinosaur tracks and, and you name it. This is a, it's a magical place. This, this place is interesting. It's, <laughs> and dinosaurs, creepy. you know? Yeah, dinosaurs. When do you see dinosaur tracks? I know, it's rare. Just right there too. <laughs> yep, right there. You can see some more debris from the, the people that got the belts and stuff like that. Wow. More shoelaces. Shoelaces everywhere. Uh, they, they, they take the shoelaces and the belts off and stuff like that uh, so they don't hurt themselves with them. Oh, so when they're arrested? Yes, yes, when they're arrested. Because they are arrested. And then we're hold, uh, the Border Patrol holds them and, and you know processes them and stuff like that. So it is an actual detention just like regular jail so they got to take all that stuff away from them yeah. wow so in these shoelaces are basically from people that have been caught yes hmm. you know that's just something i never knew it's a great view out here yeah. at night this place gets really creepy Why? really creepy so you can't see anything out here oh, I bet it's jet black. yeah it's, it gets real dark up in here so that's the entrance to get to the top of the mountain okay. to get to the cross and stuff like that wow. so this is where a lot of people from this area on Easter, they'll follow that trail right there and they'll go up through all this stuff to get to that cross you can oh, see up on top. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's a bit of a hike too. Yeah, <laughs> that is like way up there, honestly. Yeah, <laughs> but right now I think we're at about 4,200 feet above sea level, hmm. right around there. So we're up there. <laughs> so a couple years ago, there was a, a shooting at the Walmart. Yep. Yeah. And uh, a lot of people were killed and they put these crosses up to commemorate them. Oh, this is for that? Yeah. Wow. Yeah. Well, maybe I'll have you stand. Let's see. Wow, a lot of shoelaces. How about, let's just start out with you talking about some bizarre experiences while you were working, not paranormal related. Uh, you know what, really interesting things happen. Uh, you know, you run into people with uh, that are in, I guess you'd say dire circumstances. So, you know, they, they you catch them, you know, coming into the U.S. is like their last choice that they think is their last choice. And you know, you catch them, you send them back, catch them, send them back, that sort of thing. Um, I actually caught a lady one time and uh, she had been caught 201 times, 201. You know, so she wasn't very good at getting away. <laughs> but 201 times yeah I mean so many things have happened you know over 23 years you know a lot of different things happen uh, I caught a guy he was a oh god what did he say he was uh, anyway he was some sort of scientist and caught him out in the middle of a, of a cotton field out by Clint Texas which is oh probably about 50 miles to the east of us so one of the other guys says hey this guy says he's an anthropologist I was like, really? I said, why are you crossing like this? You know, we need people like you to come in and, you know, get your documents and stuff like that. We need people that are anthropologists here. Why didn't you do it the right way? And he goes, well, it's too hard. I've caught people that s they speak perfect English, like with a Southern drawl, you know, it's like, what are you doing? You know, and <laughs> well, I grew up here and, you know, and they, uh, I got caught and I had to go back and, and now I'm trying to get back in again. And, I mean, I had this one guy, for some reason, legally, we decided not to put him in jail. We're just going to take him and send him back to Mexico, like that night. I told him, I said, hey, good, good news. You're not going to jail tonight. Uh, he's like, really? And uh, this guy was from Chicago. You know, he lived in Chicago his whole life, but he was illegal. So he's like, man, when I get back to Juarez, I'm going to get myself a volcano box from KFC. <laughs> it actually sounds pretty good. You know? <laughs> but I mean, a lot of tons of tons of different things have happened. You know, we just had, you know, some strange things all the time. People ask me, what's the weirdest thing you ever saw? And I said, well, one time 
it was snowing and I saw a couch, a red couch in the middle of the river in the Rio Grande, floating down the river. And they were, that's pretty weird. I said, yeah, it's not what you expected, is it? You know, and it, the weird thing was there was water in the river and it was snowing. And it was therefore snowing in Mexico at the same time. So it's just an odd situation all the way around. I have not encountered that I can think of any murder victims. Um, I mean, one time I thought it was, but it wasn't. It was a guy was sleeping on the side of the road, which is odd. <laughs> he started snoring. I was like, oh, thank God. Uh, we did uh, run into some bandits and the bandits uh, shot up some guys and the guys uh, ran north of the river and uh, we ended up, you know, finding them and, and of course, you know, giving them medical uh, attention and stuff like that and, and they had to medevac these guys there shot it pretty bad and that was also down the Clint area down there I mean it's a wild west out there this whole mountain we're on right here uh, just a few years back uh, was full of bandits like you couldn't you couldn't hike this as like this time of night you know even though the sun's not even down you couldn't be up there it was dangerous to be up there now not so much I mean the place is crawling with uh, Border Patrol agents now it's pretty it's, it's semi-safe have you ever um, encountered like actually being shot at or yeah, attacked, I've been shot at. like that type of thing? Yeah, I've been shot at. I mean, I was just sitting there and uh, I was uh, there was a Connex box that was just north of the the border basically, and I was sitting by the Connex box, and it was nighttime, and uh, I just hear, you know, when you're being shot at, it sounds a lot different than when you just hear a gun go boom, and you, know, you can hear the bullets crack through the air, and that's what I saw there. You know, I was sitting out there, I was like, ooh. And I shut off my dome light. I was reading a book. I shut off my dome light. I'm like, all right, if you can't see me, you can't hit me. <laughs> you know, so it, it happens every once in a while. It's not, it's, not, it's not very common anymore. Mostly out in Arizona and places like that, they, they have those issues over there. You know, I worked out in, uh, in uh, Douglas, Arizona area, and that place is rugged. You know, there's so much wide open space. I mean, it'll take the people, once they cross the border, it'll still take them a week to get to where they can pick up transportation. So they're climbing the mountains and the hills and stuff for a solid week before they can even get picked up. Yeah, a lot of people die, you know, trying to cross. You know, they just don't have enough water, you know, or they get injured and then the, the, the smuggler just leaves them behind because they don't care. You know, there's something wrong with those guys. You know, they, they're not normal people. Have you ever been a part of like taking in a notable criminal? Or like, have you been, like, can you talk about that? Uh, yeah, years ago, I think this was right after 9-11, uh, caught a guy from, uh, he, he was from a couple of different places, and this dude, he just, just chit-chatting with the guy, he knew way too much about certain military things. I mean, I didn't even know this stuff, I and mean, he knew the cost of ships, you know, he knew how many ships we had, stuff like that, and I was like, this guy isn't, he's not your regular guy, you know, this guy has something going on, so kind of one of those guys before we had a really good uh, system of, of catching those type of people he would by now he would definitely be on that list by for sure you know uh, caught a few a few bad guys you know quite a quite a few bad guys but uh, like uh, mass murderers no you know like uh, Resendez Ramirez uh, I think that's what his name is uh, he was uh, the train killer he's like a serial killer that would uh, he would hop the trains and he'd get off the train at some place and he'd go kill some lady and live in her house. You know, that, that's this guy. And he was actually caught somewhere right around in here at one point. And there's a big problem with that because um, we released him. And that's why, and, uh, but we had no idea. We had no way of knowing that that was who he was. You know, we had no idea. Um, but there's, there's some bad dudes that we're catching, bad dudes. And a lot of people just don't know it. We keep it quiet. You know, we just keep, we plug on, you know, the agents just keep doing their job and uh, we don't make a big deal about some of the really bad people we catch. But I've had, you know, run checks on these people and, and you know, they have a, a rap, rap, uh, rap list, you know, um, criminal history like that long, <laughs> you know, 30, 40, 50 pages of, of criminal history, you know, just some of these guys are pretty bad, you know, kidnappers and, and all kinds of stuff. So let's now get into the paranormal stuff yeah, yes. so let's talk I mean I guess you can just kind of take us through all right so in this area uh, there's been many many documented cases uh, just on the other side of this hill over here um, back in the 90s a helicopter pilot uh, his name was uh, Louis Stahl 
uh, he had crashed his helicopter. He had some power lines, and his helicopter got hooked up and it flipped over and crashed. Well, the the people he was chasing, they saw that they saw what happened, and they went to um, the brick plant, which is just on the other side of the hill over here, and reported what they found or what they saw. And so they, you know, so when the agents had got called out on the radio, the agents went to help him. He had already passed away. He was pinned underneath this helicopter. And uh, so now, if the agents are um, not paying too much attention, or you know, if they're just kind of dozing off, or whatever the case may be, they'll hear just a loud slap on the side of their truck, just boom, and it's always the same. Uh, it's always it always happens on the side of the truck or the back of the truck, but it's always the same. It wakes you up, that's for sure. It hasn't happened to me, but it's happened to some of my friends. And um, uh, but they call him Crispy. I mean, he that's you know sort of dark humor. That, you know law enforcement has and you know they know that he's there they're keeping him alert you know and it'll scare the crap out of some people there's another one and it's somewhere near this area they had what they call scope trucks set up had some army guys working this truck as a FLIR you know forward-looking infrared and they're watching this guy inside of a uh, a little valley you know sort of a, a, a cut between the hills and so they sent the agent in to go get him and they, they call him on the radio, hey, you're getting close to him, he's right in front of you, he's right in front of you. And he's like, I got nothing here, there's no one here. Mind you, it's pitch black, it's in the middle of the night, and this guy's alone, and they're like, he, they're not, this guy, there's nobody here, I, don't, I can't see anybody. And so the army guys call him up and they say, get back up here to the truck ASAP. So he goes up to the, where the guys were, drives up to him, and he shows him the video footage. And there's the guy that they had been tracking right there on camera, standing right nose to nose with the guy with his finger pointing right in his face, just like that. And the guy never saw him. What? Yeah. And that happened right around somewhere in this area right here. What are the, who do they think that was? They had no idea. So, I mean, he was standing there and then he was gone? He, 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 the agent never saw the guy. Never even saw the guy. Never saw him. Never saw him, but they had him on camera right there with his finger in his face. For me personally, out in my area of operations, which is the Isleta Station, which is on the east side of El Paso. One night, uh, there's this area we call the Headgates, and this is where kind of the, the big canal that goes through town on the south side of town, it just kind of ends right there, and, and they control the water level and the speed and stuff like that for irrigation. And a lot of times, bodies will be found, you know, uh, drowned, and they'll be found there. And that's where the fire department fishes them out. I was being relieved, it was about one, one o'clock in the morning, so I was ready to leave, and my relief was there, and we we're chit-chatting. And our trucks are parked like door, you know, driver's side together, you know, door to door. And we're sitting there chit-chatting, and something catches my eye, and it's the fence right there, right next to us, uh, probably about 15 feet, 20 feet away from our trucks. And I see a human, but just a shadow of a human, walking along the fence right there. And I just watch it, and it just fades away, just whoosh, gone. I turned to my buddy and I said, dude, you don't believe what I just saw. He's like, no. <laughs> it's like, enjoy your night. <laughs> You're like, I'm going home. <laughs> I don't think he parked there. I don't think he parked there after that. But that area right there, what we call the Headgates area, is very active. And if you keep your eyes open, you're going to see shadows. Um, like we've seen shadows crawling behind our trucks, like crawling. You know, we'll look in the rearview mirror and we'll see a shadow crawling, you know, near, near us. And of course, that'll make you jump out of the truck or roll the windows up, depending on your demeanor. But that'll, it'll shock you. It'll definitely wake you up for the rest of the night. But there's nothing alert. ever there. No, it's just a shadow. There's another agent. Uh, I won't mention his name. Uh, he was killed off duty and they spread his ashes down the river. I would say about half of the old guys that have been around for a while have seen this guy. And I was sitting in my truck. It was probably two o'clock in the morning and I'm just kicking back and, and just waiting for something to happen and just, you know, kind of listening to uh, coast to coast, you know, the old George Norrie and that sort of thing, you know. I listen to ghost stories on the radio, on AM radio, there's nothing else to do. And all of a sudden there's a dude sitting next to me in my truck. And he was wearing a white shirt and blue jeans. And I spun around, it scared the crap out of me because there's nobody in my truck, it was just me. And all of a sudden there's a guy sitting next to me. And I spun around real fast and I, I caught a glimpse of him just long enough to know who it was. And I had met him and he was killed when I was pretty new in the patrol. And, but I knew who it was. 
and I was like, oh my God, he scared the crap out of me. And I wasn't into the paranormal. Uh, the ghost shows hadn't even started yet. This is a long time ago. So that was, that shocked me a little bit. So I was at this little party at the station and I was talking to one of the other guys and uh, we were talking about the new ghost shows that had just come out. So, oh man, you know, ghost hunters, man, it's so realistic, you know? And so he tells me a story. He says, I haven't told anybody this. And he tells me the same thing that I told you, that there was somebody in his truck with him and he vanished. It scared the crap out of him. And I said, was that over by Campestre, which is a little colonia where it happened to me. I said, was that at Campestre? And he goes, yeah, how did you know? I said, dude, the same thing happened to me. And it's happened to a lot of the Asians. And it's usually when something's gonna happen and you need to be alert, that's when this guy shows up. Another one of my friends was sitting at that Headgates area and he admitted he was starting to nod off. You know, it was slow, it was quiet, and it's, you know, uh, kind of cool that night, you know, nothing to do, absolutely nothing happening. And uh, he said this guy shows up at his passenger window, which was down, and it, this guy shows up and he leans in to the window and he says, don't trust him. And he motions like that towards the Mexican side. And of course, and the guy just disappears, like right in front of my friend's eyes, disappears. And I asked him, what do you look like? He goes, uh, well, he was wearing the old metal badge. We used to wear a metal badge instead of the cloth ones now. And he said, he's wearing a metal badge. He's a white guy. And he described this guy. I said, yeah, I know who you're talking about. I know exactly who you're talking about. And this guy had never met this guy before. The agent had never met the person that uh, showed up his window, but he described him perfectly. Um, Was it the same guy? Yeah, the same guy. He just approached that guy, uh, my friend, wearing a uniform, wearing a cowboy hat just like this, and uh, the old the old style uniform. And uh, when he approached me, he was in his civilian clothes, which I had seen him in a few times. You know, is exactly how I remember him. Uh, but it, uh, one of the guys actually jumped out of his truck and drew his gun and walked around to the passenger side like that, you know, like all tactical, you know, because he knew somebody was in the truck and then there was nobody there. And of course it, it freaked him out. Uh, another time, one of the guys was sitting in his truck um, and he saw this, saw a guy approaching uh, through his rearview mirror. So he looked in there, he sees a guy walking up to him. And that's dangerous. You don't want something like that happening in the middle of the night. You know, that'll freak you out and it's gonna put you on edge. And of course he jumped out of the truck and there's nobody. And he went, you know, cause it's like sand all over the place. So he went and he cut the sign, which is like called, it's called cutting sign. It's when you uh, look for footprints. So he looked for footprints all the way around where he thought the guy was and further, no footprints. So he didn't know what he saw. And he just knew that there was a dude, you know. <laughs> Let's see what else. There's so much that happens out here. Um, ah, there's another place. Uh, some of the agents like to park. It's near a cemetery nearby. And it's uh, uh, called Smelter Town. And Smelter Town, I think it's gonna be just right over the top of the hills over here. And uh, it goes way back to the 1800s. It used to be an old copper smelter back in the, you know, the, the, basically the cowboy days. Um, Pancho Villa camp just on the south side of there. On the south side of the river, and uh, they would bring the injured people over to Smelter Town to to be worked on by the by the uh, American doctors and stuff like that. Very active back in those days. In the uh, 1918, during the Spanish flu, a lot of children died, and inside that cemetery, a lot of the agents have been up inside that cemetery and hear, heard little children giggling and laughing and playing in the middle of the night in the cemetery and running around their truck while they sit in the truck. A lot of guys refuse to sit up there anymore. So how do you refuse to sit up there? I mean, like, you just don't. Job. No, well, you you, you, you have you a choice. Of, yeah, you get to choose. They give you a zone, Got basically it. an area. So you choose if you're going to sit on top of this hill or sit on that hill or, or you know where, you know, like the guy that's sitting up on the top of the hill over there. He's choosing that because he can see up the trail yeah. and he can see around us, too. You know, so he's got a good uh, vista. He can see all the way down there. It's a really good place to sit. Um, so that cemetery is a good place to sit also, but people decide they don't want to do it because they just get freaked out. <laughs> so it happens a lot. It happens a lot. So a lot of the guys are like, you know, you didn't tell me that was going to happen. Some people have no idea. You know, a lot of times you hear a story and then you freak yourself out. 
you know, because you heard the story. So you're thinking, oh, I think I just heard kids, you know, but in reality, it's just your mind's making, making things up. It's playing tricks on you. It could be birds or something like that making the noise. Uh, but in this case, like in the case of one of the, one of the guys, uh, nobody had told him that story. He hadn't heard it. He had no idea that that was going to happen. And it happened to him and he lost it. <laughs> He's like, why didn't you tell me? <laughs> you know? <laughs> I mean, I've been in, in the camera room and, and uh, uh, we see on camera one time, uh, we saw a guy cross and we had a good visual of him and we were watching him, it was nighttime, so we had a, the, the infrared on him and we watch him and he crawls behind this bush. Not a very big bush, you know, it was, it was you know, like that big, you know, it wasn't a very big bush. And he crawls behind that bush and stays put. We could see the other side of it, we could see everything. But he was behind the bush, so we couldn't see him, but we could see the glow of his body heat behind it. And we call the agents, the agents approach it, and you can see the agents, there's probably 15 agents all around this thing, and they're with their flashlights, and they're looking, they're looking for footprints, they're looking for sign, and they can't find anything, and they're calling us, hey, there's nothing here, we're like, that bush right there, and they put them in on the bush, and they walk around the bush, they're like, there's nothing here, there's nothing here. And, and you know, uh, over a little bit, a few minutes, you can see that heat signature just fade away. And we had the same thing happen. We watched the body come across the uh, the river and across uh, what we call the Vega, which is like a low part uh, just north of the river. And we have a levee that goes up. It's probably I don't know seven, eight feet high, and but it's got you know gently sloping sides in most places. In this place, it was probably about a 30 degree slope. You know, so we could basically see everything except that backside. And this guy approaches the levee and he disappears behind the levee. And we're scanning all over the place. We're looking everywhere. We can't see where this guy went. We call up the agent, the agent goes there and you can see him nice and slow drive. And we're like right there. And he goes, there's nothing. There's no footprints, nothing in his soft sand. There is nothing, you know? So we, we were actually picking things up on camera that the, the human eye couldn't see, which is odd. I mean, but it is FLIR, you know, so it's a little bit different technology than your regular camera. And uh, yeah, that'll, that'll, that'll mess with you a little bit. <laughs> but yeah, it's, um, let's see what else. Um, How about the, um, the figure that people were seeing on the mountain? Can you talk about just that mountain that you were talking about the other day? Otai Mountain. Yes, yes. So I haven't been to Otai, I got some friends out there. Uh, there's a guy uh, who wrote a book, I think it's called Out on Foot. Um, he, write, he wrote a book. It started off just basically the things that he had done while he was in the Border Patrol. And, you know, just your regular catching people type of thing, you know, smugglers, etc., responding to accidents. But then it takes a, a shift and it goes into the paranormal. And so what they had seen was they had seen a, uh, in the middle of the night, there's like no people on this whole mountain. It's bigger than this. And there's no people out there except for a couple of agents. And the agents don't go too far away from their vehicle unless they're in, in teams. So they were out there and they see walking up the ridge of the mountain, they see a little glowing kid, a little girl, probably about six, maybe five years old, in her dress, walking by herself up the mountain ridge. And there's no way that there could be a little glowing kid out there unless it was paranormal, but she'd been seen more than one occasion. Uh, one of the agents had seen her floating face down in a, uh, a stream that ran through there. Of course, he freaked out and he ran back to his truck to call it out on the radio. Hey, I found a little kid out here, you know, that appears to be deceased. And so as soon as he got to his truck, he heard a noise and he turned and that little girl was standing right there next to his truck, right next to him. And, you know, of course that freaked him out too. Uh, that mountain is interesting. I'd love to go out there, but at the same time, terrified. You know, that place is, it sounds just absolutely creepy. I'm sure not everything happens all, every single day, but just the chance that you'd run into something cool like that, you know, it's just kind of freak you out. So uh, the way they put it in the, in the book, I'm not gonna sell out the whole book here, but uh, a couple of agents were on foot and they were down in this valley and they're waiting for a group to come out and they estimate the group probably, I don't know, 40, 50 people. So they're down there in the brush just waiting and they're calling back and forth on the radio. And there's a there's a, a camera operator that's stationed nearby somewhere and he's watching the whole thing. And the agents start hearing something moving through the brush and it's getting kind of close. So the camera operator says, get out of there now, just get out of there. And they call back up, they say, hey, the, 
the group is coming to, to us. We can hear them. He said, negative, get out of there now. So the official story was that there was a big old mountain lion out there and they needed to get the agents out of there because the mountain lions are known for eating people in those places. You know, they eat people and it happens all the time. When this guy was retiring, uh, he told the agents this, the true story that he had seen a very large human, humanoid uh, thing crashing through the brush towards them. And he said it was much bigger than a normal person. Months go by. There are some people out there they are wearing khakis and polos and stuff like that. And they run into the agents, or the agents run into these guys, and they kind of joke around. They say, well, where are you guys from? They said, well, from the Bureau of Land Management. And they said, oh, you guys out here looking for Bigfoot? And they're like, well, actually, so they indicated that they actually were looking for Bigfoot out there. You know, so that'd be kind of an interesting job to have in the BLM. It's a Bigfoot hunter. <laughs> right. That, that humanoid or whatever, that was on the floor. Yeah, they were watching it on the floor. Yeah, they were watching it on the camera. And, uh, but they, they didn't want that sort of news to get out that there's something out there that's freakishly large and freak out in the agents. They don't want to go out there anymore. But there it was, you know, it was, it finally came out and now it's public news. You know, <laughs> they were actually watching something that doesn't technically exist, you know. How about UFO sightings? Any stories with Border Patrol agents or even you? Yeah, um, well, one of the uh, Santa Teresa agents was actually telling me that they were watching something and it lifted up from the ground and it flew and it landed again, but it never lifted up again. And so they sent the agents out there to find out what it was. They're thinking maybe they had, uh, maybe they had a drone or something out there, right? And uh, so they went out there to find it, and they they couldn't find anything out there. There's no footprints. There's no markings. Nothing. But there it was. You know, uh, they they saw it with the with their cameras. Okay, UFO basically. <laughs> basically a UFO. Yeah, we have no idea what it was. It just you know it just was odd. You know something like that. I mean I've seen UFOs but I was like a little kid and out here in desert areas especially going out towards Alamogordo you're gonna see some weird stuff as a matter of fact we we're in this little place called Oro Grande and Oro Grande is like this little stopover not even a stopover it's a pass through there's like 10 houses in this place and we stopped to it used to be like an A&W or something there's like a little restaurant there and still the building still exists but we were coming out of there and we were like in this porch area and just then we see these very large round objects they're like brown and black almost like footballs but there's like three or four of them you know just kind of floating hovering uh, at the time my dad worked at uh, white sands missile range which uh, white sands has a lot of projects that uh, nobody can talk about so the people there and we're talking this is the early 70s and the people are like oh you know what that's just probably one of the projects that they're working on you know at white sands everybody's like oh okay okay because these things were there and they're hovering and they're silent and, but you can see them very, very clearly. So everybody's like, oh yeah, that must be what it is. That must be what it is. I mean, I was little, I was hiding behind my mom watching these things. I was scared to death. And they took off. <laughs> and so when we were, Jesus. Oh, God. What the I hell? Them off. Oh, yeah, no, I, I went right by my ear. <laughs> <laughs> right when you're talking about UFOs. Yeah. Like, <laughs> Welcome to the it's desert. It's a small UFO. It's a small oh, UFO. Whoa, 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 buddy. Whoa. It won't hurt you. No. Jesus. There's that little Bronx football. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so so everybody was everybody was relieved when they started saying oh you know what it's gonna be one of the projects from white sands and, oh okay and my dad said and when we were getting in the car my dad said it's not one of ours probably that same year we were driving to El Paso from from Alamogordos uh, we had a medical emergency with I think it was my little brother or something was sick and uh, so we were driving all the way down to El Paso from Alamogordo which is like 70 miles and it's a very uh, dark drive back then and as we're driving something was like hovering next to us, like oh. keeping up with us. And it was not on the road, it was off the side of the road. You know, so they saw that too. I didn't get to see that, I wasn't paying attention, I was just little. We, I've heard a lot of the agents say that they've seen some some interesting UFO type stuff out there in the desert. I mean, some of the some of the things that they work on, the military works on and stuff, I was, I was on this highway called 62180, and basically in the middle of nowhere, nobody around, it was just me, and there's, hardly any traffic on the highway and it was still daylight and I just happened to look over towards this valley area and I see a wingtip 
of like a fighter jet. Just come up, you see the wingtip like that, and then go back down. No sound, no sound whatsoever. So some of that UFO stuff might have been uh, some sort of military thing that they're working on. Uh, some of it could be legit. You know, there's there's a lot of stuff going out, going on out in the in the deserts and stuff out here that we just don't know. We don't know. What about? These, yeah, I know. Every time we film anywhere, it's a goddamn train. <laughs> Always a train. I was just, Seriously. I was just gonna quickly say, like, when I was at Nellis Air Force Base in Vegas, you know, I was there on a rotation, and I was there during the time when the um, stealth fighter was a secret, and they were doing test runs, uh, and people thought, you know, UFOs. And then there was the stealth uh, bomber, and then there was a Black Hawk crash as well that killed, like, unfortunately, like seven servicemen. But, but that's what the deal, but even the base, the people were like, oh my God, I think I've seen these lights. And they didn't even know it was the stealth fighter right. being one of these test runs at night only, you know. Right. Yeah, but. We had an SR-71 crash uh, northeast of town, probably about uh, an hour outside SR of town. The one that goes really yeah. High. This was back in the, wow. way back in the day. I, I think it was either in the 60s or 70s and people still didn't know what it was. And it crashed out there. Living this close to military bases, you'll see some interesting things. I mean, one time on the horizon, I was watching up on the horizon, there's like a little dot up there, like a bright light, and the sun went down and the light's still there. <laughs> and I'm like, what is that? And I got my binoculars out and I'm looking and it's a balloon. There's a weather balloon. It was so high that it was above the, the where the sun was hitting the earth. It, <laughs> the sun was still hitting it. This is way up there. Said, That'll mess you up. You know, you, you think it might be a UFO. It's not, you know. I'm a skeptic when it comes to that stuff, but when I see something like that, when, Especially like in my case, when we saw those things and my dad's like, that's not ours. Then that's when you gotta start questioning, what is it really? You know, that, that might be legit. So these mountains, any specific stories from here? There, there's a lot of, as you know already, there's a, there's, a, there's a vibe here. There's some sort of really almost nefarious energy in this place. You know, it's not supposed to be that way. It's kind of like a holy site, you know? And, but there's this nefarious energy here. Uh, a lot of the guys do see shadows moving and stuff like that. Uh, I've heard of agents uh, going after some people that they thought they saw, and there's nobody there. You know, they get there and there's no footprints, no nothing. But they knew that they had seen the the they knew that they had seen bodies. And uh, I'm just not sure. I think like right in there somewhere, I think is where they would see it. It'll shake you up when you're out here in the middle of the night, nice and quiet. Everybody's, you know, using light um, and trying to be really, really careful with their light and their sound and stuff like that. And they're using light discipline and noise discipline and they're, and they're just being real quiet and all of a sudden you see several shadows and they're, they're not people. You know, they're not living humans and it's been seen here a lot. No, it wasn't that damn off. <laughs> no, it, it was, uh, that was, okay, that was pretty weird well, because I don't know, it was just, I could see like a blurry shape. Like almost, it wasn't just like, a, almost like a gray mist, but just right here, like right here. It right just went right here and just. Just now when I paused the camera, oh. we saw that's, that's something go right yeah. by Jeff. I shut yeah. my camera off as well. Yeah, we both shut our camera off and then it immediately yeah. happened. I know, first, first <laughs> it just did it again. Oh. Okay, that's all right. Uh, so uh -oh. I thought maybe it was like, you know, cause it's cool out, it's my breath and this, yeah. but the wind is moving a little bit. So, and I thought maybe, you know, something to do with my vision because, you know, sometimes you see things out of the corner of your eye. It was not out of the corner of my eye. It was right there. And it happened two times exactly the same. Yeah. Right there. And it's funny because we're by these. Yeah. I wonder if it's uh, some sort of residual. Mm-hmm. Something that, that just happens over and over and over. I did not. It just did it again. Oh, my gosh. It, right, it just did it again. Oh. That's three times. All right. Who's here? Jeez, now I'm kind of feeling a little like yeah, I have queasy. A, I have a piercing headache. Or something. Like, like, something's the happening. Whole time we've been here, I've had a make anything up either. Headache. It's like um, no, me either. I did not expect to see something. Oh. And we're not inside a building. You know, usually it's oh. you're inside a building or something. But I mean, I didn't. I did not expect that. <laughs> I did not expect that. Uh, three times, cool. three, and then each each time it wasn't exactly the same. Like if I had something wrong with my eye, it'd yeah. probably be the same yeah. each time. Mm -hmm. But this is three different times, two times right here, 
one time a little bit smaller and it's probably another three or four feet that way. Wow. Okay. Leon, final statement. What do you want to leave people with? So El Paso, I would think is this region, as you guys have found out, this whole region is the most paranormally active area I've ever seen in my life. I've been in a lot of places in the world and I've never seen anything like El Paso. Never. This place has so much uh, paranormal activity. It's just every building downtown is haunted. Like everything we've ever gone to investigate has had activity. We didn't expect activity at every time, every single time, but every single time there's activity. And it's just amazing. I mean, just a place like this, I mean, what we saw just a second ago, it just blows my mind. This whole place. <laughs> yeah. Did you see it? Well, I felt something. <laughs> just did it again that's four times and it's all the same right here it's got to be residual i'm telling you el paso has got something going on <laughs> so there's there's just so much activity here you, you can spend every single day going to a different place and you're going to find activity at the end of the day it was super interesting to hear these stories from leon right where a lot of these stories actually happened and i don't really know i don't know if that mountain is haunted I think it probably is, but when we return from our short break from the Paranormal Files, we're going to be bringing you guys some of the craziest investigations in the history of this YouTube channel. So thanks for watching everybody, and stay spooky.